An executive from one of the largest media companies in the world has admitted that he helped create the monster that is Donald Trump, and he's expressing his deep regret, and I have the full story for you next. A great many very smart people have said Donald J. Trump's ascent to the White House would not have been possible without the tremendous media boost he received from NBC. The Apprentice TV show delivered millions and millions of eyes on the man and the brand, and today the leader of the NBC team that gave Trump that MAGA megaphone is apologizing to America. When I saw the headline that read, We Created a Monster, I knew it wasn't a quote from Jim Henson talking about a puppet with a cookie problem. The only question I had was, which Donald Trump monster are they talking about? The monster with a track record for assaulting women? The monster who endangers foreigners and people of color with his white nationalistic rhetoric? Or the monster who continually dishonors war veterans and mocks others? So many monsters. The letter I'm sharing is a three-part monster trilogy from former NBC executive John D. Miller. He speaks of the Trump facade they created for the show, Trump's deep character flaws, and you're going to want to stick around for the finale. It's a really sketchy idea that Trump had for the show that reveals that race is always on his mind. I want to apologize to America. I helped create a monster. For nearly 25 years, I led marketing at NBC and NBC Universal. I led the team that marketed The Apprentice, the reality show that made Donald Trump a household name outside of New York City, where he was better known for overextending his empire and appearing in celebrity gossip columns. To sell the show, we created the narrative that Trump was a super successful businessman who lived like royalty. That was the conceit of the show. At the very least, it was a substantial exaggeration. At worst, it created a false narrative by making him seem more successful than he was. In fact, Trump declared business bankruptcy four times before the show went into production, and at least twice more during his 14 seasons hosting. I discovered in my interactions with him over the years that he is manipulative, yet extraordinarily easy to manipulate. He has an unfillable compliment hole. No amount is too much. Flatter him and he is compliant. I also found Trump remarkably thin-skinned. He aggressively goes after those who critique him and seeks retribution. That's not very businesslike, and it's certainly not presidential. I learned early on in my dealings with Trump that he thought he could simply say something over and over, and eventually people would believe it. He didn't like being fact-checked back then, either. Exaggerating ratings is one thing, but spreading falsehoods about relief work of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, about immigrants eating cats and dogs, about the deadly COVID-19 pandemic, about him winning the 2020 election, or countless other lies is far more dangerous. I also learned from working with him that he has questionable judgment. At the rap party for The Apprentice Season 3, he pitched an idea for the upcoming season. He told me we should make a team of black players compete against white players. My first thought was, what the F? I tried to get through to him by speaking the language he understands, money. I explained that sponsors wouldn't want to be associated with a show that pitted races against each other. But he could not understand why this was such a bad idea. And no, we did not use his idea. While we were successful in marketing The Apprentice, we also did irreparable harm by creating the false image of Trump as a successful leader. I deeply regret that, and I regret that it has taken me so long to go public. I spent 50 years successfully promoting television magic, making mountains out of molehills every day. But I say now to my fellow Americans without any promotional exaggeration, if you believe that Trump will be better for you or better for the country, that is an illusion, much like The Apprentice was. Even if you are a born and bred Republican, as I was, I strongly urge you to vote for Kamala Harris. The country will be better off, and so will you. In the interest of time, I truncated John D. Miller's letter, but if you would like to read it in its entirety, please head over to usnews.com. But before you do, I want to share a message about Trump's evolution. Right before I found this article, I received a message from a friend who is pro-Trump, and she knows I'm fond of calling him out for his racism. She shared a video of a black man at a Trump event who said, how can Trump be racist? There's pictures and positive stories of Trump with Jesse 
Jackson, Al Sharpton, Oprah, and Muhammad Ali. Of course, he's cherry-picking from a time vault that is many decades old before Trump became prolific at revealing his dark thoughts. And we know that Jackson, Sharpton, and Oprah have emphatically denounced him since. And we know Ali was a civil rights champion and he would not tolerate the current version of Trump. We can assume they have regret for any association they had with him then, knowing who he is now. As Miller mentioned, Trump invested a lot of energy in maintaining a facade, and maybe the 78-year-old version just doesn't have it in the gas tank anymore. But he has also discovered that the base did not diminish after he revealed himself. So what's the point? And his discovery about half of the population should be a wake-up call to the other half of the population.